One of the most emotional live events experiences I ever had involved Maya Angelou and Oprah Winfrey. My wife worked for Harpo Studios for a while, and at the end of Oprah's run of the Oprah Winfrey show, they had a big live event and had all kinds of superstars there. And Maya Angelou had written a poem just for Oprah Winfrey. Now, I was sitting way back here in the audience, but where I was sitting, I could see the teleprompter. So I got to read along with Maya Angelou as she was reading this poem, and she also had it in her lap there. But something started happening. As she was reading this poem, and I was following along on the monitor, all of a sudden the words didn't sync up with what she was saying. She was saying something different. And so I turned and looked back at Maya Angelou, and, and she seemed to be slurring her words just slightly. Something was off. I thought, oh my god, Maya Angelou is drunk. <laughs> but then something else started happening. On the teleprompter, it started moving around crazy. The teleprompter operator was lost. They didn't know where she was. And I'm sure the people back in the control room with the producers and the directors were panicking. But here's what was happening. Maya Angelou had made intense eye contact with Oprah Winfrey. And she just started speaking from her heart. And it was like watching poetry just being blooming in front of me. And Oprah Winfrey just started bawling. And Maya Angelou was bawling. And soon the entire audience just started crying. And I realized nobody was ever going to forget this moment. But here's the thing. Emotions can be really dangerous sometimes, in, especially in live events, because you don't know what's going to happen, right? Sometimes live events and emotions don't mix. Things get out of control. Things can get scary. And it's awkward. It's awkward for the audience sometimes. And the worst thing is when someone tries to contrive emotion, tries to force us to feel something we don't want to feel, or that we're not sincerely feeling. Emotions can be dangerous in a live event. But I want to ask you something. What do you think people are going to re remember about your live event? What are you going to remember about today? How long will you remember this event? I think the answer is forever. Now, you may not remember what was said here. You may not remember all the details, but you are going to remember something. Maya Angelou said, I learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. So my proposition today is this. Just like a great artist chooses the colors and lines very carefully, just as a, a great chef thinks about each course and what the flavors are and what the dance in our mouths and our experience is going to be. Just as a composer would design the flow, the tensions, the tones, the, the, the highs and lows of music. As event professionals, we all need to design the emotions of an event just as carefully. Stanley Kubrick, great filmmaker, said, a film is or should be more like music than like fiction. It should be a progression of moods and feelings. The theme of what's behind the emotion, the meaning, all comes later. So whatever you're designing for a live event, think about the emotions. So just real quickly, what do you think a goal of an event is? I think for a lot of events, the honest answer is people are trying to entice you to come to something so they can not just teach you something, but truly to get you to do something. They want to persuade you and, and make you do some specific actions for selfish purposes. And the result, typically, if that's their goal, is this. Luckily, the lights are so bright, I can't see who's doing that for me right now. That's good. I would like to present an alternative goal for a live event. I think the true goal of a live event is, yes, to in invite somebody to come to teach them some things, to convince them of some things, and to motivate them to take some specific actions, but for a mutually beneficial purpose, for a relationship. 
At Multi-Image Group, we think about this idea. We consider ourselves architects and builders of 360 degree transformational experiences. Now, it's a weird chart here, but it's, if you think about how do you create a relationship with somebody, it begins with a first impression. Then you sort of, sort of are attracted to them. You want to, you want to get to know them. You want to get their number. You want to get, get a date. You want to get them to register for that event. Then you want to start building that anticipation about what it's going to be like, what's going to happen. Then there's that awkward moment when you knock on their door and you, you fumble with your car keys as you help them get into the car and, and all that stuff. But ultimately, you're trying to get a communication going. So there's some exhilaration. There's education. You want to learn about the people you're talking to and getting to know. You want to inspire them. And then ultimately, it will culminate, culminate to something. And maybe on a date, it's your first kiss. But there should be a, an end to that. And then you say goodbye. But how you say goodbye determines your relationship, too. A lot of event planners don't think about the goodbye portion. And then that relationship begins. You follow up. You say hello. You send flowers. You get to know them. You continue that cycle. So when it comes to emotions, it's all about this piece of technology, the human brain. The human brain is where we have our memories, we have our ideas, and it's also the source of our emotions. So what is a brain? A brain is actually 10 trillion neurons that are these almost alien-looking creatures. You can see them there. They're kind of like aliens with these long arms that are called axoms, and they have these dendrites at the end. And when we remember something, what happens is these dendrites come together, and there is a spark. There is a transmission of these things called neurotransmitters that makes a connection. And that's called a synaptic connection. Now, how long you remember something depends on how long that synaptic connection stays connected. And what determines that? Neurotransmitters. So the neurotransmitters are kind of the chemistry that glues these things together. The longer together, the more you're going to remember. The longer you're going to remember something. So what are neurotransmitters? This is getting really sciencey. I apologize. I'm a nerd about some of this stuff. I like to learn the reason behind things. Neurotransmitters, there's over 100 known different neurotransmitters. You've heard of them. You've heard of adrenaline, right? Another word for adrenaline is epinephrine. So that happens in high stress situations. Norepinephrine is another form of adrenaline that makes you pay attention to things suddenly. We've heard of dopamine for pleasure and endorphins. I want you to experience some of this right now. I want you to feel some neurotransmitters, all right? So I want everyone to raise their hand. Please, everyone raise your hand. Now I'm going to do something that's really going to embarrass you. No, I'm not going to, but I just wanted to scare you just for a second there so you can feel a little epinephrine go through your body. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to appropriately put your hand on the person next to you. And if you're not close to someone, go, go make that connection. <laughs> now, there's a nervousness that's happening here, but what's happening is in our bloodstreams right now is oxytocin. Oxytocin is sometimes called the cuddle neurotransmitter. It helps us feel a sense of intimacy, it helps us feel a sense of connection. OK, you can stop now. <laughs> yes, please stop there. Thank you. There are lots of different chemicals. But here's the truth about emotions. Emotions really are just a chemical reaction that we feel. That's why we call them feelings. So as event professionals, we need to become master mixologists to how we mix these chemicals up in our audience. Now, it's important not just to do the same chemical all the time. It's important to mix them up. And that's the art of events. What are some of the emotions that are appropriate for events? I have come up with a list of 12 of them. I call them the, the flirty dozen. And it's because you want to flirt with your audience a little bit. You want them to feel different things. So what are those emotions? The first one is this. Ah! You want to get their attention. You want to startle them sometimes, surprise the audience. Huh? Create a little mystery. Create some confusion. That's a good thing to do with an audience, because what happens is your brain starts going, what's happening here? I, I want to understand what's happening. And so they start paying attention even more. And then you can pay that off. Aha! 
That's the payoff sometimes for, for those mysteries. You get a revelation, aha! And that's a, that releases endorphins inside of you because there's something that you've just discovered. It's, a, it's teaching your audience something. <laughs> Everyone knows humor helps speakers. Why? Because it also creates dopamine in the system and it makes people feel good and it usually is very connected to ha aha because it's a it's tension often in a joke and then a release. Uh, now ah is an interesting emotion. It's a worry. It's like what's about to happen here? Something he's at the edge of the stage. Uh, is he going to fall? The circuses have made a living on uh, with acrobats and with all the lion tamers and things like that. It's a great emotion to stir up in your audience. Uh-uh. Anger. Getting your audience angry can be really powerful, especially if you're talking about an issue of social consciousness or social good, or if you're perhaps talking about your stocks going down and you want to get your audience anger, angry so they will be riled up to do something about it. Oh! Sometimes watching someone get hurt or someone taking a hit or hearing a story where someone had a very difficult time stirs up a shock, but then empathy. Yeah! The entire sports industry has made billions of dollars on yeah! Because they, it's that exhilarating moment where something successful has happened. Aww. Touch the heart. Tell something that really is sweet. My wife just this morning sent me a text of a pu little puppy dog that was lost and came to the front yard. And I literally said out loud, aw. It's another emotion that you can use in your cocktail mix. Hmm. Arousal. Now, this isn't just sexual arousal. It's appealing to the senses. It could be food. It could be uh, the promise of a treasure, a reward. Hmm. Ah! That, was, that was my angelic sound. Inspire your audience. I love the word inspire because the word spire is from the Latin means spirit or breath. And so you inspire, that means you're putting spirit into somebody. And when you aspire, you're putting your spirit to somebody. So we need to conspire, come together and share our spirits before we expire and die. And ah! That's usually the end of an event. You just want your audience to feel satisfied. You want them to have that sense of satisfaction. Each one of these emotions releases a different chemical inside of your brain and inside your blood system. Reba McIntyre just two Sundays ago was, a, was rewarded and honored for her contribution to the Country Music Award. And she said, when I'm on stage, I always try to take my audience through many emotions as I possibly can as many emotions as I possibly can. I want them to go from laughter to tears, to be shocked and surprised, and to walk out of the door re with a renewed sense of themselves, maybe even a smile. So great performers already sort of know this, and they consciously create their live events to have multiple emotions. So real quickly, here's three tips for you about how you can make sure the audience is going to remember these emotional moments. First, appeal to all the different senses. When you do that, it activates different parts of your brain. So more of these neuronal connections and synaptic connections can take place, and there's more likelihood that they're going to be remembered. This is what typically when someone listens to someone on stage just talking like I'm doing right now. It's language comprehension and language processing, just two parts of the brain. But here's the second tip. When you tell a story, it starts activating all those different parts of the brain again. My final tip is this. Benjamin Franklin said, tell me and I forget. Teach me and I will remember. Involve me and I will learn. So let me get you really quickly involved with, as we finish up here. I want you to do two things for me. First, I am going to tell you a story. And at the end, it's going to be a real strong conclusion. I don't want you to applaud. OK? I want to create an awkward moment for me. So, but then, here's, if you don't mind, ma'am, then I want you to begin the slow clap. All right? And then some people over here can sort of add on to it. Then you add on. And then everyone start clapping and cheering. And you, I'm not doing this for my ego. I know it's going to be false, and you're faking it, and it won't be real, OK? But I want you to feel this awkwardness, all right?
The second thing I want you to do is, on your chairs, or I saw some on the floors, are these little envelopes that you were wondering about that say, please do not open until instructed to do so. Get one of those in your hand, please. All right, got it? All right, here we go. We're gonna let you feel some of these neurotransmitters course through your bloodstream. I have had the opportunity to be on the board of directors of an organization called the Joel Haiti Initiative. And last year I got to go to Haiti to this remote part of Haiti where it's one of the poorest areas where there's an orphanage that we're trying to support and, and help because what's happening is kids are getting abandoned. And even worse, kids are being snatched from these orphanages sometimes to be sold for ungodly things. Now we want to try to help them. And so we went there with a group and I got to play with these kids. You can see me kind of there in the corner with the big wide face. As I was playing with these kids and just having fun with them, this little girl right there handed me something. I want you to open up your package here. This is what she handed me. A little Jolly Rancher candy that somebody had given her earlier in that day. She had this gift from somebody else, but she handed it to me. I want you to look at that color, that color green. Such a vivid color. Now I want you to open it up and listen to the sound of the paper. It's a crinkly sound. Now feel what it feels like. It's a little sticky in your finger. Touch it. Feel that cool, sticky, fully feeling. Now I want you to smell it. Smell that candy apples aroma. Aroma is one of the strongest memory uh, sealers that we have. Now pop it in your mouth. It's sweet. It's tart. Some people don't like that flavor, but I think it's a great flavor. This little girl showed me something. She showed me that all of us have the capacity to be generous. And all of us have the capacity to share love with other people. And if we all together as event professionals can remember that, then we can change the world. Thank you. No? I want to feel awkward. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for playing.